Endurance Sweat here with my comprehensive guide to Swift group rides. In this video, I'll go over why I like group rides, Swift group ride basics, my tricks for staying close to the yellow beacon, the role of the group ride sweep, and the infamous group ride fence. And then toward the end of the video, I'll go on a Swift group ride to illustrate the concepts. There's a lot to cover. Before I do, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Okay, let's get right to it. Why do I like group rides? Well, it's just fun to ride with others in a pack. And you get the benefit of the group draft. And it's engaging. You have to pay attention to stay close to the yellow beacon. And you don't want to leave gaps in the peloton. You'll certainly get more ride-ons and more social interactions. Soon you'll get more followers and you'll be following more people. And it's motivating when you regularly join a group's rides. Let's go over some group ride basics. Every group ride has a ride leader, also known as the yellow beacon. You'll recognize the ride leader by the yellow polygon swirling above the ride leader's head. And then there is the peloton or group. You'll notice the ride leader is not at the front of the group, but in the middle of the group. There'll be riders both ahead and behind. Do not mistake the rider at the front for the ride leader. The objective of a group ride is to stay close to the yellow beacon, ideally within plus or minus 20 meters or 60 feet. And then there is the ride sweep. You'll notice a red polygon swirling over the ride sweep's head. If you fall behind the group, look for the ride sweep. Ride sweeps are typically strong riders. You can catch their draft and they'll pull you back up to the group. Now for the infamous fence is a red screen projected across the road. You shouldn't be going beyond the red fence. The intention of the red fence is to encourage riders to return to the group. Let's go over some group ride basics. My suggestion is to arrive early. Just like in a real life ride, you don't want to get there at the last minute. As a rule of thumb, I'd suggest at least five minutes before the ride begins. And if it's an intense group ride, you may want to warm up even before that. You can join as early as 30 minutes before a ride, but that's not really necessary. After you've joined the ride, but before the ride begins, I suggest you announce yourself. Post a group message. Tell them where you're from. You need to start pedaling before the group ride begins. My suggestion is to start pedaling 30 seconds before the ride starts. Stay close to the yellow beacon ideally within 20 meters, either in front or behind. They say the best draft is just in front of the ride beacon. And in my experience, that seems to be true. Stay behind the fence. If you get close to the fence or get beyond it, soft pedal to return to the group. If you're in a group ride, give ride-ons. You can't give multiple group ride-ons using the companion app, but you can still give individual ride-ons. Watch and follow the ride leader's messages. He'll be encouraging riders to slow down, regroup, and giving positive reinforcement when the rides are going well. And by all means, enjoy the draft. Here are some group ride features to keep in mind. Most group rides are view group riders only. That is, you'll only see the group riders on the road, not others who are swifting. Many group rides dress all participants in the same kit or jersey. Many group rides are late joins. That is, you can join the ride up to 30 minutes after the ride begins. A few group rides use double draft. The draft will really pull you along, but you need to stay within the pack because if you fall behind, it's going to be difficult to catch up even with the help of the ride sweep. If you've done meetups, you know there's a stay together setting to keep riders together of varying capabilities. There is no such feature in group rides, though I understand Swift is looking into it. 
You cannot use a time trial bike when you're riding in a group ride. In Swift, time trial bikes have no draft. And keep in mind on Swift, you can only see the closest 100 riders around you. Some group rides have several hundred riders, but you'll only see the 100 riders that are closest to you. Here are some of my tips to staying close to the yellow beacon. If the yellow beacon is in front of you, then you'll see the yellow polygon swirling over the ride leader's head. Just pay attention and you should be able to stay close. If the yellow beacon is behind you, look at the bottom of the screen. You'll see the yellow beacon's name in yellow with the ride leader's distance behind you. Again, try to keep within 20 meters of the ride leader. Unfortunately, this display is not available on Apple iOS devices. Another way of keeping track of the yellow beacon when the yellow beacon is behind you is to use rear facing camera view number six. That way you can see where the yellow beacon is behind you. Again, you'll notice the yellow beacon swirling over the ride leader's head. And if the ride leader is far behind you, then you'll notice a yellow shaft of life projected over the ride leader's head. That's a cue to slow down. Personally, I find using the rear camera view to be very effective in staying close to the yellow beacon. And you can always check out the yellow beacon's location relative to your own using the mini-map at the top right-hand corner of the Swift screen or the mini-map on the companion app. This is not really the most effective for staying tight to the yellow beacon, but it does give you an overall view of the yellow beacon's location relative to your own. I mentioned earlier about paying attention to the yellow beacon's messages. Here are a few examples. If you need help in the rear, Stephen is there to help you. In this case, Stephen is the red beacon. Here's another example. Big blob around me. Great discipline, my friends. And keep the group together uphill. And now I want to talk about the fence. The purpose of the fence is to encourage riders to stay around the yellow beacon and help build the group's draft. The fence is an optional feature which the ride leader may turn on or off. And the ride leader can set it at 5, 10 or 20 seconds ahead of the ride leader's position. And in some cases, the ride leader may turn the fence on and off during the ride and even reset the position of the fence. You won't see the fence until you get ahead of the ride leader's position, and then it will appear. If you get close or beyond the fence, then you'll see a message appear on the game screen, return to group. Soft pedal so you'll slowly return to the yellow beacon. I do not suggest that you stop pedaling altogether. You'll lose all your momentum, and when the group catches up to you, they'll zip right by. If you find yourself consistently ahead of the red fence, why you might want to look for a group ride that better challenges your capabilities. You don't want to get a reputation of being a flyer or a person who consistently rides ahead of the red fence. Next, we'll look at a couple of photos of the red fence. Here's the red fence just ahead of a group of riders. And here's an overhead drone view looking backwards at the group. You can see the red fence and there's a few riders ahead of the red. And then looking back, you can see the yellow shaft of light above the ride leader's or yellow beacon's head. And looking further back, you can just make out the red shaft of light over the red beacon's head. Now let's talk about the ride sweep or the red beacon. You might find yourself falling behind the group and you've lost the group's draft. There are a whole variety of reasons why this happens. You could be having a swift tactical problem, maybe a moment's inattention while you're sending out a group message, or maybe you're just struggling to keep up. Look for the red beacon with the red polygon swirling above the red beacon's head. And the red beacon may also have some helpers. Jump on their wheel and they'll try to provide you drafts to get back up to the group. 
Many group rides have a feature called Late Join. You can join the group ride up to 30 minutes after the start of the ride. When you late join a ride, or rejoin a ride, as we'll talk about in a moment, you'll be placed with other riders not too far from the Yellow Beacon. Now there is one special purpose for the late join. If you've already joined the ride and you get seriously behind, for example, you have a technical problem, you can rejoin the ride, end the ride and log off swift, log back on and rejoin the ride when prompted. So if you run into technical problems, don't despair. Now that I've gone over the group ride basics, let's go for a group ride on Swift to illustrate these concepts. So I'm ready to join my event, turned on my fan, filled up my water bottles, have a towel handy. So let's join the event. And here I am in the starting corral. Always a good idea to arrive early if it's a very large event with several hundred riders. Why you might find yourself way back in the corral and when the ride starts, typically the ride leader will be toward the front and it'll take you a while to get up to the ride leader. So always best to join the ride early if you can. Typically I'd say five minutes before is a good rule of thumb. And it's a nice idea to announce yourself. Say hello to the group before the ride begins. So when the ride starts, the first thing I'll be looking to do is to hook up with the yellow beacon. This ride is about to get underway. There's the yellow beacon. In many rides, the yellow beacon goes out fairly slowly. So you don't want to overpower it and get ahead right from the start. So here's a good example. I'm right behind the yellow beacon. I can see the yellow polygon swirling over the ride leader's head. And you can see that the ride leader is not at the front. He's in the middle of the pack. And there's an example of the ride leader or yellow beacon showing you his position and distance so other riders know where he is relative to the group. So here I'm right beside the yellow beacon. And now let's move ahead of the yellow beacon. Now you notice as I've just gone past that the ride leader's position is shown at the display at the bottom of the screen. And it shows the number of meters that I am ahead of the ride leader. And you'll notice the further I get ahead of the ride leader, I'm now at 20 meters, that the ride leader's position display gets smaller and smaller. Here I'm at 50 meters in front, and you can see that it's at the bottom and almost not visible. And there it goes, it's no longer displayed. Let's look at the rear camera facing view, camera view 6, which you can also access using the companion app. And I can see where the yellow beacon is by the shaft of yellow light. So there you can see in behind the position of the yellow beacon with the yellow shaft of light. And we'll see how that changes to the normal polygon as I get closer and closer to the uh, yellow beacon. I'm just soft peddling here. So now I'm getting, I've been sliding back to the yellow beacon. And you can see no longer, it's no longer a shaft of light, but you can see the yellow beacon directly. You'll notice I did not stop pedaling altogether because even pedaling very slowly, you can see that they still sit by me pretty good. Now when you do have the rear camera facing you, you'll notice that at the bottom of the screen, 
it does not show how far the yellow beacon is behind. If I go back to camera view one, the default view, and there you can see the ride leader's position behind. If you have a keyboard available, go to one of the drone views, look behind, and look up, and there you get a, also a pretty good view of where the yellow beacon is relative to your position. So the drone view, we're facing drone view, can also be very helpful. In this case, I can also see the shaft of red light over the red beacon or the ride sweep. Yes, this uh, rear facing drone view can be very helpful. And if I go to the forward view, oh, there's the fence. So when you get close to the fence, you know it's time to release off the pedal. And another way to check your position relative to the L beacon is to check out the uh, mini map in the top right hand corner of the screen. Your position is shown by an orange arrow, and you can see the position of the fence and the yellow beacon. Not very good for fine control if you're trying to stay within plus or minus 20 meters, but to get an overall view, it's helpful. And here's the default view, and I'm within 23 meters. As I said, ideally plus or minus 20 meters. And depending on the slope of the course, you can see it's a minus 5% grade and I'm really putting out any watts and I'm still uh, gaining going ahead of the yellow beacon and that's because I was on the down slope and the yellow beacon had not quite got down to the down slope. Now I'm going up and he's, the yellow beacon's going down and you can see now he's, the yellow beacon's within 8 meters of my position. So when the course grades go up and down, you do need to watch quite closely to maintain a tight position to the LOB. And when you're riding in a peloton, you want to stay tight to the riders in front of you to get the best benefit of the draft. You don't want to leave gaps to open up. If you do, if you do, you get a message, close the gap. So something else to pay attention to. Yeah, and then when you're, you get tight to the right in front of you, it'll say okay for a moment. In a group ride, you can't take the opportunity to message other riders. You can hit M on the keyboard or bring up the action bar and then type in your message. Here I've typed in, enjoying the group draft, um, press enter to send it. And you can also give ride-ons using the companion app. If you tap the thumbs up button, it will shout out ride-on, but you're not giving a ride-on to an individual rider. A couple of different ways to give ride-ons during the ride. Uh, if you click on the name of one of the riders on the riders list on the right hand side and you'll see a thumbs up icon appears and you can click on that to give a ride on in there you can see a thumbs up over the rider's head but you have to click back to me to go back to your own view on the on the companion app tap on swifters you go to the swifters page and then top on the rider's name and then you can give a rider a ride on that way to are back on the map. Uh, you cannot give a group ride on by tapping on your position but you can tap and then give a ride on to some rider though you're not sure exactly who you're giving it to. So it is kind of fun to keep giving out ride ons. Here I'm riding at five meters, three meters ahead of the uh, yellow beacon. And they do say that this is the best position for draft, just ahead of the yellow beacon. 
course, you have to be following other riders. And here we see the fence just ahead of us. Ideally, you do not want to go ahead of the fence. The fence is to encourage everyone to stay with the group and enjoy the draft. If you do go through the fence, as I'll show, demonstrate here, you see you get a note return to group. So let's do that soft pedal. I don't suggest stop pedaling altogether, and when the group does catch you, they'll just fly by. And there we slip back behind the, behind the fence. When you're riding hills, you don't have to be that far ahead of the ride leader to get up to or ahead of the fence, because the fence is placed at a certain time interval ahead of the ride leader. So you're going at a much slower pace up a hill. So distance-wise, the fence is much closer to the ride leader. So it's an area where you need to take care. Here I have dropped behind the uh, red beacon, or the ride sweep. And if I did need help getting pulled up back to the pack, I could send out a message group message saying I needed assistance. Oftentimes there's the sweep, but there are other riders around him who are also prepared to draft you back up to the pack. In this case, the sweep is very close to the yellow beacon. They're in very close communication with one another on Discord, typically, and they keep close eye on the rider positions. So if somebody does fall back, then they'll drop back to help them. So let's uh, demonstrate a late rejoin. I've joined this ride. This is a Tour de Swift ride. And uh, now I've stopped. Uh, assume I am having a technical problem. So what am I to do? I'm going to go to Menu and End Ride and click OK. And I'm going to say uh, Garbage That. Now I'm logging back into Swift. Repair all my devices and click on Ride. And now it's asking me to join the event. Better start pedaling. Now it's finding riders. And you can see I have rejoined the event. So if you do have technical glitches within the first three minutes, don't despair. You can always log out, rejoin, and we put back in with other riders. Personally, on long rides, sometimes being on the standard, you can become tiresome. And so I have a keyboard and access to the drone view. Keyboard zero. And I'll pan out and I'll ride with this view for quite a while. I can always see the yellow beacon either in behind or ahead. And as we go around corners, I keep having to use the arrow keys to adjust the view, which keeps which is an, which is another point of engagement. On many of the group rides there are sprints and here we're coming up to one and some riders are jumping for it. The key is that if you do sprint, then afterwards you slow right down and regroup around the yellow beacon. One thing that's really nice to do is to give the ride leader a ride on. And if you can, also give the red beacon or sweep a ride on. This ride's coming to a close in a few minutes. I hope I've been able to illustrate the basics and concepts and key features that I spoke about earlier. And perhaps we'll see you on a swift group ride in the not so distant future. If you've enjoyed this video, why please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel Endurance Sweat.
Until next time, train hard and have fun.